separate basements. That leads to longer tenancy, higher rents. So with all of that said, you give them a beautiful space, upgraded kitchen, upgraded bathroom, everything looking nice. Eventually you come out here and you fix up this curb appeal. And you know, once we get these tenants with, that are attracted to the much nicer uh, look, they're gonna pay a higher rent. I'll tell you what that is in a minute. You know, they're typically gonna be a more high qualified tenant and you won't just get some pure goddamn fucking savages just coming in here and doing this. Like, what this shows me is the two fucking assholes living in this property are, are just fucking savages, dude. I mean, like, Kareem, I'm pretty sure if you walked outside to your yard, right, your yard's not going to look like that. So, by doing, uh, you know, these repairs when these savages eventually move out, like, we'll still keep taking their money right now, though, because there's two savages both living there. Uh, if they're willing to pay 675 and, you know, live in this shitty ass yard fine whatever we'll keep taking their 675 but when it comes time right for one of them to move out we're not going to put in another savage we're going to put in a nice high quality tenant we're going to get the high quality tenant by improving everything so making the insides beautiful cleaning up that curb appeal we do all of that you're going to take that rent from 675 a unit up to 850 a unit okay so we can go from 1350 a month all the way up to 1700 a month. That is an additional 350 a month plus an additional 4200, you know, that's $4200 a year is what I'm trying to say. And the cool thing is pulling back up the chart which goes over all of your expenses like these random expense estimates just because we increased that uh, cash coming in on the top end, that's not going to increase these costs. So essentially that 350 or 4200 that is more or less 100% profit all coming into your pocket. So long term, in my opinion, I think this thing is a cash cow and I think people are missing the boat. I think they're seeing some cosmetic issues that they're afraid of, that they're scared of. They're seeing this backyard. You know, you're hearing me right now on my show telling you the people that live here are probably fucking savages because they are. I mean, dude, there's really no other way to slice it. If if this is how you have your yard and you're an adult human being, you're a fucking animal. You're a fucking savage. Um, but, guys, this is a newsflash for you. Fucking savages got to live somewhere, and they do pay their rent. I'm not saying you should want to have this be the experience for the rest of your life, but you can get into this right now, still make a little bit of money, and we'll naturally work them out, and we'll get you a much better, higher-quality person and we'll improve this property, but at the same time, we'll improve your ROI, keep your ownership experience, uh, you know, much more low key. Because with this particular neighborhood, I'd venture to say you probably have one of the crappiest looking yards on the whole block uh, with this yard. The rest of the neighborhood, like this is, this is a, it's not the, it's a super high class neighborhood, but it's it's not D class by any means. So. This is probably an eyesore for the neighborhood. So, you you know, typically you want to buy the crummiest house on the block. That's kind of real estate 101, right? Uh, so I just see a ton, a ton of value-add opportunities here. Uh -huh.